in the second part of video series on how to determine end reactions and determinate theme, we are going to discuss three cases. First, the case of simply support being subject to UDL that is uniformly distributed load. Then the same beam will be subject to VDL that is very distributed load. In the end, we are going to discuss uh, point load plus UDL plus VDL on a simply supported beam acting simultaneously at one time. So let's first discuss UDL. How do we represent it? So these are the two signs used to represent UDL. Right? So here we can see that the intensity, this is the intensity of the load, intensity of the UDL. So in the case of UDL, the intensity of loading does not change throughout the span of the beam. It remains the same. Whereas in the case of VDL, the intensity of the loading keeps on changing throughout the span. So here it is zero k per fit, and on the and on the right hand side of the beam, it's two k per fit. And between these two extremes, that is two k per fit and zero k per fit, we can also calculate the intensity of the loading just by interpolating, right? So in the end, we are going to come up with a way to determine the end reactions due to combination of loading. So by combination of loading means that at the same time, point load, UDL, and VDL is, uh, is acting on the beam, and we have to determine the end reactions due to the combination of this loading. So let's discuss case one now. So we have a portion over here where we have a simply supported beam. Uh, where, uh, on which two, on which a UDL is acting of two k per fit, intensity of two k per fit, and having a spin length of five fit. So we know that in in the case of simply supported beam, we have three reactions. We have to determine three reactions. For our hinge, we have two, and for our roller, we have one one vertical reaction. So it, in order to determine reaction in the case of UDL and VDL, we have to uh, remember one point over here so for, before starting to determine reaction and applying conditions of equilibrium we have to determine we have to convert this udl into a resultant concentrated or point load we have to convert this into a point load so in order to convert this rectangle this udl into a point load we are just going to multiply spin length by intensity of loading so to determine resultant point load we have to multiply by we have to multiply intensity of loading by spin length. Two multiply five kips of ten. So this arrow, this magnitude of the resultant point load is going to be ten kips. So after determining this, uh, it is just a case of a point load, a point load acting on a simply supported beam. And we know how to determine. We had determined uh, beam subject to a point load. The end reactions of beam subject to a point load. So how we are going to do that? We are just going to uh, apply conditions of equilibrium. First, I've applied the condition that the summation of all forces in y direction is equal to zero, and I've taken upward sign convention as positive for the force. So, how many forces we, do we have here? We have three vertical forces that are acting in y direction: R A Y, this resultant point load, and this R C Y over here. So, R A Y and R C Y are going to be positive, as shown here, and this resultant load, two multiplied by five. Is going to be negative because it is acting opposite to my sign convention. So, after solving it, or if after solving it we are we obtain equation number one. After applying summation of F Y, we are going to apply second condition of equilibrium, which is summation of F of X. That is the sum of forces in X direction. So, in this portion we have only one force. In this whole figure we have only one force, one reaction that is acting in X direction. So R X equals zero. So after that, we are going to apply the last condition of equilibrium, which is summation of moment about a certain point. So that point is A point. So summation of MA equals to zero gives us. So how many forces are there which are creating moment about point A? Well, there are total four forces, but two of them, this one over here and this one over here, create moment about point A with respect to point A. And RAX and RAY don't create any kind of moment about point A. Why? Because they don't have any perpendicular arm. So RCY this force over here has a perpendicular arm of 5 feet and this over here has a perpendicular arm perpendicular distance with respect to point A equals to 2.5 feet so this over here becomes 2.5 we know that moment is force into distance so this is force multiplied by distance force 10 k per feet multiplied by distance 2.5 so from this condition we can obtain RCY from this condition over here summation m after obtaining the value of RCY equals 5 kips, we can just substitute it into equation 1, 
this equation over here to obtain the value of ROI, to calculate the value of ROI. So ROI is obtained as five tips as well. So let's discuss this minus sign and plus sign here. So I have taken clockwise convention for moment as positive. Well, in this case, RCY is creating counterclockwise movement, which is opposite to my sign convention over here. This goes this way and this goes. This is creating movement like this about point A. So this is opposite. So that's why I take a negative sign here. Well, for the case of point floor, it's, uh, it's matching my sign convention of the clockwise movement over here. It's, it, it, it creates a movement that is uh, matching my sign convention. So I've taken it as positive, right? So we are done with the calculation uh, of reaction for this portion over here for UDL. Now we are going to determine uh, reaction for this portion for a beam subject for a simply support beam subject to a VD. So we are going to follow the same steps that we did in the previous portion. So first of all, uh, to, we are going to convert this VDL into a concentrated point load by just calculating the area of this rectangle. Oh, sorry, the area of this triangle over here. So first of all, there will be three reactions obviously for this case as well. Uh, and then this is the location uh, of this uh, resultant point load. We are going to convert this rectangle, this uh, triangle into this point load. How we are going to do that? We are going to calculate the area of this triangle. So what would the area of this triangle? We know that the area of triangle triangle is half and base and multitude. So half uh, and two is the height and five is the base. So this would, this would give the magnitude of the resultant load. So after converting it, it's, it, it is simply a case of uh, supported beam subject to a point load and you know how to calculate the reaction reactions to that. So first of all, we are going to apply the conditions of equilibrium such as summation of Fy uh, and then I take an upward positive and we know there are three vertical forces, two upward, one downward. This is opposing my sign convention. So I've taken it as negative and ROI on R2 are positive. So we've obtained equation one after solving this. So similar similar result is obtained as in the previous portion, uh, Rx equals zero because there, there's only one force. So after applying summation of f of x and summation of f of y, we are going to apply the last moment, last condition of equilibrium that is taking a moment above with respect to certain point. So in this case, we are going to take moment with respect to a point. How many forces are there which are creating moment about this point? How many forces are there? These two forces won't create any moment. There's this force and this reaction over here. So what is the perpendicular arm of RCY? The RCY, the perpendicular arm of RCY is five. So RCY into five minus sign because uh, it is creating counterclockwise moment which at point around point A. And according to my sign convention, I've taken positive clockwise. So that's why there's a negative sign over here. Uh, for point load over here, this represents the area of the triangle that is half and five and two give this load. And this over here is the distance. It's the distance with respect to A point. So remember, in the case of UDL, when we calculated the point load, resultant point load, it was acting at the center of the beam. In the case of the VDL, it acts, the resultant point load acts at a distance of two thirds of the span length from the minimum intensity of loading, that is zero k per fit, remember this. And from maximum uh, intensity of loading, it acts at uh, one third distance of the span length or the, or the area or, or the length at which the VDL is acting. So in this case, we are trying to calculate the perpendicular arm or distance of this force uh, with respect to this point. So it would be two third, two or three of the span length, which is five, two or three or five. So this is force and this is, the, this is the perpendicular arm with respect to point A. So if we want, if we solve this, we have one unknown over here, then in the end, we are going to calculate RCY. RCY is obtained as 3.33 kips. And if we substitute it in equation one, we, we can obtain, uh, from here, we can obtain the value of ROI uh, equals to 1.66 kips. So we have a third portion over here, and which uh, point load, UDL, and VDL are acting simultaneously at one, at one time, and then we have to determine the reactions. So obviously there are going to be three reactions for hinge two and roller one. To, we are going to follow the same steps that we did in the previous two portions of UDL and VDL that we did in the uh, second and first case. So we are going to convert this the, uh, this uh, UDL into a concentrated point load and this VDL also into a resultant point load. 
So how we are going to do that? We are just going to calculate the area of this rectangle to get the resultant load. So the resultant load can calculate is 2, that is the intensity multiplied by 3. So 2 multiplied by 3 would give us the resultant load for UDL and for VDL we are going to calculate the area of this vector, of this triangle. So 1 over 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3, 1 over 2 multiplied by height into base would give us the resultant load for the VDL that is 3 kip. And then we have, we, it is a case where there are 3 point loads. Acting, acting on a simply supported beam and then we can determine the reactions using the conditions of equilibrium as we did in the previous questions. So first we are going to apply summation of f of y and then we have two forces that are positive y because they are matching the sign convention ry and rby and downward forces are taken as negative 2 kip and this one over here is 6 kip as determined here and this one over here is 3 kip. So these both are taken as positive and this one over here is minus 2 and this one over here is and this one over here is uh, for, is the load from the UDL, concentrated, concentrated load from the UDL and this one over here is from VDL, minus 3. They are acting in downward direction. And then if you solve this, we, will, we are going to obtain this equation number 1 and then we are, we, are going to, we are going to apply second condition of equilibrium that is summation of f of x equals 0. Uh, the same result as obtained in the earlier portion, rx equals 0. After that, in the last, we are going to apply the condition of equilibrium related to moment with respect to a certain point. So we are going to take moment at point A equals 0, summation of moment at point A equals 0. So how many forces are there which create moment respect, with respect to point A? So there are four forces. This point load over here and these two resultant point load and this support reaction. So there are four forces which create moment with respect to point A. With, this, with respect to point A. So these two forces uh, which are acting at at support A don't create any kind of moment with respect to point A because they do not have any perpendicular arm. So let's discuss the calculation. So this one over here is for the first point load. So if you want to uh, know the moment created by this load, so this one over here is for the first point load force into distance. So force here over here is 2 kip and the distance with respect to point A is 2 foot. So 2 multiplied by 2 would give you the moment uh, would give you the moment because of the point load 2 because of the 2k point load and this over here is the is the moment created by the UDL converted point load resultant point load so 6 is the magnitude of this point load and 5.5 is the distance from this point to this point so 2 plus 2 plus 1.5 would give you 5.5 and this would be the moment created by the UDL converted point load and this over here is the resultant point load obtained from VDL. Magnitude of the resultant point load obtained from VDL and this over here is the distance with respect to point A of this point load. So from here to here, if you do the calculation, it will come out to be 10 feet, right? So if you do the calculation from, if you try to calculate distance from this point to this point, we know that from, we know that from minimum side of the VDL, the point load, the, the resultant point load is going to act at two thirds of the total length on where the UDL is acting. So 2 third multiplied by 3 would give you distance from this point to this point. And if you add up these distances uh, with that, then you're going to obtain the total value to be 10 feet. So this would be, this would be the moment of, of the VDL converted point load with respect to point A. In the last, we have support reaction. If we calculate the total distance with respect to point A, it would come out to be 11 feet, the perpendicular arm of the RBY reaction. So we have one unknown in this equation and that is RBY. And if you solve it, RBY is obtained as equal to 6.090 kip. And if you substitute it in equation number one, if you substitute RBY here, we can obtain RBY from here and RBY comes out to be 4.909 kip. So we have calculated all the reactions we have done here with this quotient. If you have any kind of question or query related to this topic uh, or the things discussed in this video, write it down in the comment box and I will try to answer it. Thank you.